Well, that was tense, wasn't it? That was exciting. Uh, in the end, Arsenal managed to scrape through to the last 16 of the Europa League. This is the Arsenal versus Benfica match review. Hello, my name is Richard. Welcome back to my channel over and over and over again, the Positive Arsenal channel. In this video, I'm going to look back at last night's rather exciting Europa League game, rather tense as well, wasn't it? Um, but we did manage to get the right result in the end. I'm going to be looking at the team lineups, I'm going to be analysing the performance and selecting the man of the match. But just before I get into all that, I want to make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. So if you're new here, you like what I do, some positive Arsenal content, please click on the subscribe button down in the corner there. Please give this video a like as well, share the content around. And if you've got any comments at all to make about the performance last night, or anything at all to do with Arsenal, please drop me in the comments box below as I do love to hear from you guys as well. So Mikel Arteta just made one change to the side that had drawn 1-1 with Benfica last week. I didn't expect him to make too many changes from that lineup. So this was how we started the game. It was Bernd Leno in goal. Then the back four, it was Bellerin at right back. David Luiz and Gabriel came back into the side. having missed the game against Manchester City at the weekend. And Kieran Tierney came into left back. That was the only change replacing um, Cedric. In midfield, it was Ceballos and Xhaka again as the two pivots. And then the three just in front, it was Saka back on the right-hand side, Odegaard in the number 10 position and Smith Rowe on the left and Aubameyang through the middle. So I say it was just that one change into the starting lineup from last week. In terms of Benfica, they actually made three changes to their side uh, and actually changed the system as well slightly. Obviously, they did need to come here and score a goal. So um, they had let in goal again as before. It was a back three as they played last week. It was Verissima, Otamendi and Vertonghen. They then, their first change was at right wing back. Gonzalez came in. They then had Pizzi, Weigel and Tarapt in the middle with um, Grimaldo on the left. And then they played two up front this time. It was Rafa and Sarah Everovic. So both of those two were into the side and they both came off the bench, of course, last week. So they were your team lineups for this game. Well, I mean, what can we say about the, the football itself? It was a very up and down game, wasn't it? Uh, went one way, then the other. We started quite well, actually. Uh, we looked in control of the game in the first 25 minutes or so. We did get the goal, really good goal it was as well. Fantastic ball, wasn't it, from Bukayo Saka to put Aubameyang in. And after missing all those chances in the first leg last week, this one, he just dinked over the goalkeeper, really composed um, and confident finish, actually, which surprising after the last couple of performances from him. But that looked as though we were we were going to maybe cruise through this game. Benfica were offering very, very little, but then we did what Arsenal tend to do, um, make it difficult for ourselves. Poor judgment, really, from Danny Ceballos. The first goal, just before half-time, he gave away a needless free kick, just about, uh, what, five, ten yards outside the penalty area. Um, and what a free kick it turned out to be from Goncalves. Curled into the top corner, gave Leno no chance. And suddenly, our away goal from last week had been ruled out. And uh, it was all to play for in the second half. Of course, the second half started and, and we, we put the ball in the net again. Again, it was a Bamiang. Again, it was a neat finish. This was a ball from Odegaard, but it went to VAR and VAR ruled that a Bamiang was offside. It was a very tight call, uh, but another really neat finish actually from, from a Bamiang. Uh, but this one didn't count. And of course, after that, it just went from, from bad to worse, wasn't it? The second goal for, for Benfica actually came from an Arsenal corner. The goalkeeper grabbed the ball, kicked a long ball up pitch. Um, so Bios really had, could have done anything with the header. Instead, he tried to head it back was to Bert Leno, but he was too far away. The header was too weak and Rafa nipped in, took it round the goalkeeper and rolled it into the net. And suddenly we were really up against it now. We now needed to score two goals with the away goals now against us. But that's all right. You thought to yourself, you know, we've got Pepe, we've got Martinelli on the bench. They can come on, they could cause goals, they could score a goal, get us back into it. But no, instead, straight away, Mikel Arteta brings on Thomas Partey, a defensive midfield player and also Willian, of course, a player with no goals and no assists um, since the first game of the season. Very, very strange substitutions in the circumstances, but 
it did work to a certain degree. Within five minutes, it was Willian who pulled the ball back for Kieran Tierney to score the equaliser. Great goal it was from Tierney as well. Great first touch, beat his defender and then drilled a left foot shot across the goalkeeper into the far corner of the net. And suddenly we had something to fight for. But we still needed to score another goal. Of course, 2-2 on the night wasn't enough. Benfica would have gone through on away goals. And they even had chances as well on, on the break. A few mistakes at the back. We looked particularly shaky at times. Um, but in the end, we got away with that. Um, and, then, and then, of course, just after I've been complaining this, this last couple of weeks about a lack of late goals from Arsenal, we pop up with one just when it mattered as well. There was, what, two and a half minutes of normal time remaining. Saka again with the assist. Uh, a lovely cross from the right-hand side on, on his left foot to the far post. And there was a barrier to head into the empty net from about two yards. Of course, VAR again had to be involved. Again, it was quite a tight call, actually. But this time it did go in our favour. The goal was given. It was more of a relief than anything else. And we had actually straight through. Now, we were the better team over the two legs. I don't think anybody can, can have any doubts about that. But we made it so difficult for ourselves to beat what was, in truth, a quite an average Benfica side. A Benfica side without goals in them. And yet over two legs, we gifted them three goals. Of course, if we're going to go further in this competition, when we come up against better sides than Benfica, we're going to have to cut out these silly mistakes if we want to progress a lot further. So for me, it was a relief at the end rather than any great joy. Relief that we got through. Um, but to me, this performance maybe raised more questions than it gave answers. Uh, we were poor in spells, really, really poor. But at least we showed some fight and some desire. And we did manage to turn around a deficit uh, and win the game, which is something that's been quite rare under Mikel Arteta. And also it's been almost... Uh, non-existent this season as well. So we have to take the positives from it. We've got through and, and I say we did show a lot of spirit. I mean, a man in the match is quite difficult to single out one particular player. There was a few players who really caught the eye and there were also some that were really, really poor. Um, Bert Leno in goal didn't have a lot to do, did he? In fact, the only two shots on target uh, were, were the two goals and he couldn't do anything about either of those. So we can't really um, criticise Bert Leno too much. Um, I thought the back four looked pretty shaky at times. I've got to be honest, um, Bellerin didn't have his best game. David Luiz and Gabriel looked to make a lot of mistakes, didn't they? Give, gave the ball away, some sloppy passing. It was only really Kieran Tierney at left back who, uh, of course, got the goal, drove us forward. He had a really good game, didn't he, Kieran Tierney? He's certainly in the running for a man in a match from this game. Um, the two in midfield, I mean, Sabayos had an absolute nightmare, didn't he? Two terrible mistakes to give them the two goals that almost cost us, and he got hooked off straight after the second mistake. So, um, really, really poor night for him. I thought Granit Xhaka did okay. Again, it wasn't his greatest performance. At least he was trying to pass the ball forward and get us moving. The three just in front of course, Odegaard in number 10 position. Some lovely little passes at times, but um, he never really got in the game, did he? He was brilliant last week against Benfica. I think maybe they realised the problems that he was going to cause and they made it more difficult for him. He still had a few good moments, um, but he was having to come very deep to get the ball and didn't really have a lot of influence on the game. Smith Rowe again on the left-hand side. I don't think that position really suits him. He's not going to go past the player and whip a crossing. I mean, he's always fifteen inside. I don't think it really suited him. And you know, you have to say one thing about the substitute bringing Willian on for him. At least Willian gave us a little bit more width on that side of the pitch, and it did lead to, to the second goal. So it wasn't a great night for Smith Rowe. So that really leaves us with Saka and Abamyang as well. They, they, them two that certainly got to be in the running for Madame Match, haven't they? Um, Abamyang, of course, with, with two great goals, important goals as well. Denied a hat trick, of course, by the by the offside flag. Certainly looked sharp in front of goal. It probably wasn't the greatest performance from him overall. But those two goals were really important, wasn't they? And of course, Kieran Tierney, as I say, is in the running as well for his goal and his all-round performance. But I'm going to have to give the man of the match. There's only one man again for me. It's got to be Bukayo Saka. Not only for his two assists, which were both fantastic, just his all-round performance. Again, despite looking really, really tired in the second half, he dug deep, gave everything. And in the end, he provided the crucial cross for that winning goal right at the end of the game. So for me, the man of the match in this game, Bukayo Saka. So as I said, really, it's more questions have been asked than answers, really. But we did get through. We have kept our season alive and we have remained in the competition. Of course, sometimes when you're in a cup competition, it's just important to get through and hopefully we can improve in the next round. Obviously, the draw is a bit later on today, so we'll see what that brings us. Uh, it just, this game kind of reminded me a little bit back to that Sheffield United game in the FA Cup last season. Another difficult game where we managed to squeeze through in the last minute. And of course, we went from strength to strength after that, um, beating Manchester City and Chelsea to win the cup. So maybe this that might repeat itself maybe we'll get confidence from this 
Um, and over two legs, I do feel as though we can compete with most teams. It's just have we got the quality to, to to win against some of the better teams later on in this competition? We'll see. Um, but we can't do anything about the draw now. We've got through, and that is the main thing. We're in the next round, um, and let's hope we can keep this going. And it can also give us a bit of momentum in the league as well, because I still think it's important that we try to finish in the top six. It's going to be difficult, um, but the more games that we win between now and the end of the season, hopefully come May, we'll be in a much better position, both in the league and hopefully um, through to the final of the Europa League as well. But improvements need to be made or we're not going to get much further, are we, unfortunately? That's my review then of last night's um, exciting game in the end um, against Benfica here in Athens. Um, coming up on the channel later on tonight, I've got my pre-match Leicester show. I've got Jack from Leicester Fan TV coming on. That's going to be a, a really good show that we're going to go for the usual stuff. Uh, look at past matches between the sides and players that's played for both clubs, all that kind of stuff as well. Melvin and Andrew are coming on as well, so that's going to be a really good show. That's eight o'clock tonight, so please tune into the channel for that. Tomorrow I'll be releasing my Leicester preview video, looking ahead to that game on Sunday. A uh, very difficult game that's going to be as well. That'll be released tomorrow lunchtime. Um, and then, of course, on Sunday, match day, I'm actually on Leicester Fan TV Sunday morning. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock to preview that game. So tune into that if you can. And then I'll be doing a watch along going live about quarter to 12 with the build up, a bit of team news. And then, of course, full match commentary and analysis from 12 o'clock. And then after the game, uh, around about two o'clock, I'll be doing the, the post match fan reaction as well. I'll get maybe three or four fans to come on to give an instant reaction to the performance and the result and all that kind of stuff. So loads and loads coming up on the channel. So if you haven't done so already, please click on the subscribe button down in the corner there. Please give this video a like, share the content around as well. Drop any comments in the box that you made at a performance last night, how far you think we can go in this competition now. Obviously the draw is very soon as well. So maybe drop your comments in there when, once the draw is made as well. Let me know what you guys think as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support of the channel. And of course, in the meantime, heading into another busy weekend, another difficult game, isn't it, away at Leicester on Sunday. Come on, you gunners!